Tark Fatel here from SB Live, the Southern Section sit down. We've got one of the best. He's leading the best program. They are the defending high school football national champions, Jason Negro of St. John Bosco. Welcome into the studio. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Tark. Happy to be a part of your program today. Love it. Love it. Coach, a little bit of a softball here for the viewers that don't know who you are, kind of how you got into coaching. What sparked you becoming a coach? Did, have, did you always want to do it? Did you just find yourself on the sideline and running a drill? And next thing you know, you're like, I want to, I want to, I want to lead one of the best programs in high school history. Now, you know, talk about your journey into high school football. Well, I think it starts, you know, goes way back. I mean, as a student, I was a graduate of St. John Bosco High School, and I had like a lot of kids, the dreams to go play in the NFL or to go play Major League Baseball, and that quickly I realized <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't going to happen. So I was actually going to college. I played baseball at Santa Ana College for a couple of years. And um, I started, a buddy of mine said, hey, do you want to help me coach this youth football team at Bellflower Youth Football, part of Orange County, Junior All-American? And I said, yeah, I'll help and try to go and do that. And I went out there and I spent, you know, the first year coaching a bunch of seven and eight-year-olds. And I absolutely fell in love with it, so much so that I changed my major. Um, I decided to become a teacher. And then I wanted to get into the educational field and to work with young, young, young people and help them to become young adults. So started there, I spent five years at the youth level and then Kiki Mendoza, who was the head coach at Bosco, you know, back in 1998, I guess, I'm dating myself a little bit, but uh, Kiki reached out to me and said, hey, I'd love to have you be a part of my program. He was the first year head coach at Bosco. I worked there for three years, then went out to Tribuco Hills for nine, uh, the last seven of which is the head coach. And then I got my dream job in 2010 to come back to Bosco to try to test my skill set in the Trinity League. And kind of the rest is history. I've been there 14 years and uh, we've done some really remarkable things. And I just love having the opportunity to use my platform and my program um, to work with, with, like I said, young adults and try to get them to the next phase of their life, which is college. And I'm going to use you know, our football program as a vehicle to be able to do that. And that's my classroom. And I spend a lot of time, effort and energy uh, to try to instill a lot of, you know, good things to these young men and get them to where they want to go. And I think we can win a lot of football games as a result of doing that as well. And that's what we're doing. Correct me if I'm wrong. And I'm going to go to my paper here. So Pac-12 champion, in, in, Pac, excuse me, Pac-12. <laughs> no, hey, you, you might be able to compete in that league. Uh, Pac-5 champion in 2013, went on to, to win the 2016, 2019, and 2022 Division One. So you're a five-time, or is that four-time champ? Four-time. Four-time champ. You, went, you were a one, two, three, four-time finalist of the Pac-5 and the Division One right. final. And then you've won four state championships. Cool. And all those wins, finalists, state champions all at the highest level. What What is the common denominator of maybe all those years? You know, why so much, Why so excellent? Can you explain it? Well, I mean, I think it's, it's not just um, one thing that you can put your finger on and say, this is the absolute reason why we're as successful as we are. I think it goes back to kind of my main, I guess, vision or my main, you know, philosophical belief in the fact that you need to hire hire and surround yourself with really talented people. And I think that's the number one thing that I have done at St. John Bosco is they've given me the autonomy to go out there and to try to, you know, surround myself um, with the best people possible. And it's not just the coaching staff, it's our training staff, our, our director of football operations position, um, you know, all of the parents and, and the people that come into our program, we're looking for excellence, we're looking for elite type people. Uh, and if you surround yourself with all those type of people and you allow them to go out there and do their jobs, and if they're the tops in their industry, then you're going to be super successful. And I think that's a philosophy that I have had at Bosco. And, you know, again, I'm a big learner. I think leaders nowadays, in order to become an elite learner or an elite leader, you have to continue to go and learn from some of the best people. And that's something that I like to do. I like to go and try to surround myself and you know, from the best collegiate programs and bring that some of those ideals and I and you know philosophies back to our program. And I think that's kind of being the number one thing would be to probably surround yourself with the most talented people possible would be the number one reason why we are successful and we're doing what we're doing. I like to ask because because it's a high because it's high schools. When you were in high school, you graduated from Bosco in ninety one, right. did a little research. When you were in high school, who was the guy? 
who did you go watch on Friday nights that really, wow, that's a next level guy. We all kind of have those moments in our minds where it's like, I remember watching this guy and thought, oh my gosh, you know, who, who were some of those players for you when you were a high schooler? You know what's funny? Honestly, if I re- that's a great question. Nobody's <laughs> ever asked me that because as I sit here and I try to answer that question, the funny thing was it was never a player. Mm. You know, I played with some pretty cool people. You know, Nomar Garcia Parra was was a classmate of mine, so I played football and baseball with Nomar, and I had some really talented guys around me at Bosco at the time. But honestly, when I think back about that question, it has – I mean, my mind wanders toward – I actually looked up to coaches – you know, I looked up to Jeff Brinkley, who was at Newport Harbor High School, was a guy that I was like, man, that guy does some really cool things. Or John Barnes, who was at Los Alamitos at the time. Um, Steve Grady, who was at Loyola, would be somebody that I actually was like, man, this guy is pretty phenomenal. Jerry Jaso was at Long Beach Poly, you know, when I was in high school. Bruce Rollinson was getting his start at Modern Day at the time. So when I think about that question, it's the first time in 21 years of being a head coach anybody asked me that. But It's really intriguing that I answer this in this way, but I looked up more to coaches and thought, man, it's pretty impressive what this program is able to do. And the ones that were able to do it um, consistently were the ones that I looked up to the most. And that's where I maybe kind of gravitated toward. And that's the reason why that I got into the coaching profession, because I certainly wasn't that talented of an athlete and I could never play in the program that we have now at Bosco. But um, you know, coaches are the ones that I looked up to. No question. Coach, when you are dealing with families, mm-hmm. I think we've had other guests on and coaches, when you're dealing with the high school level, regardless of how high that level is in the high school ranks, mm-hmm. you got to deal with parents. Right. And it's just the nature of being a high school coach. Some of those conversations, I'm sure, are difficult, depending on what those expectations are for their child. Can you talk about the challenges and maybe how you navigate some of those conversations with those you know, moms and dads out there? I think the biggest thing is you have to be authentic and you have to be truthful. You know? And sometimes when parents you know, come to you and they approach you about the status of their child and you know, why they're either in a position that they're in or how do they get to a position that they want to be in, you, know, you have to have real authentic truthful conversations with these families and I think I've built a reputation within our Bosco football community where I don't have a lot of um, issues with parents I really don't I mean they're my, that's not to say that they're parents that are unhappy with the position that their you know son is you know playing in or the amount of playing time that they're getting at a, at a particular time well the first thing that I have is I have a lot of equity in our success you know so it's kind of hard to argue with what we're doing from a year in and year out it's like obviously we're making the right decisions <laughs> right, we just right, won right. friday night 42 to 7 so i think we made the the decisions <laughs> correctly within a program and i don't mean that in an arrogant I way know, i'm I just know. saying <laughs> that you know we we've got some equity built in with the decisions that we're making and it's been a consistent level of success so i've had a theme with the way that i approach parents a lot of coaches are like we're not going to talk about playing time well i'm opposite If a parent wants to talk about playing time, come on in, bring your child in, and we'll sit down and we'll talk. We'll watch film. We'll discuss. We'll have an open and honest conversation. But I tell the parents as well, you have to be cautious because you may not hear things that you want to hear based on my opinion. And football is challenging because it's a subjective decision that a coach has to make. It's not like two kids are running 100 meters and there's one, one, there's two. (laughs) Right, you have to make a decision. You know, and there's certain positions that are obviously a lot more hotly contested. Quarterback position being one. Um, You know, wide receiver is another position. Defensive back, a lot of the skill positions. But one of the things that is important is when people come to St. John Bosco, they know what they're getting into. And they know that they're getting into a highly competitive environment that's going to properly prepare them over the next four years of their career for the, what they're going to experience at the collegiate level. Kids come to our school with aspirations to be a collegiate athlete. Well, what better way to be able to put yourself in position to prepare you for that than to be in that environment four years earlier? And that's the reason why we've had a lot of success with our parents and them understanding that, man, if I go to Bosco and my kid is able to compete or learn how to compete, and learn how to deal with some difficulties, then he's going to be properly prepared for college. And I think that is something that has been highly successful for us. Because the hardest part, from grades one through eight, these kids have all been the dude. They're the man, they're the man. They never come off the field. They're a two-way player. All of a sudden, you step under the Bosco campus, you're like, whoa, this is a different environment. i got a lot more competitive people to have to work with here. 
Well, the cream rises to the top. Those guys continue to compete. Uh, Caleb Sanchez, our current quarterback, sure. is a guy that's in that situation right now. It took him four years to assume the starting role at now the seventh or eighth, ninth ranked team in the country, which is pretty cool for him to go through that. So um, I think it's an expectation and in managing those expectations that parents might have that has put us in position to where it's been kind of I kind of welcome it. If you have a question about your son and you want to know how he's going to perform or what he's doing or the lack of performance he's having, be more than happy to sit down with you. Uh, adult to, uh, to adult and have that conversation and I've not experienced very many difficulties with that well you talk about accomplishments and great things hey national champions isn't right. a bad title that's is that the first time you've been named a national champion coach no, we've been national champs three times three now times. realizing it's a mythical thing because sure, you don't actually play for it in high school but you know we've been lucky enough to finish you know number one in the country three times and we finished in 2016 number two so, you know, in 14 years, four out of those 14 years, we finished, um, you know, in the top two in the country. And I think right now Max Preps did a thing over the last 10 years where the one high school that has actually finished in the top 10 during that 10 year span. And again, that for me is such an accomplishment. It's such a, a great achievement, not only for myself, you know, selfishly, when you think sure. about some of the accomplishments that you have had in your career, um, but the memories and all of the experiences that I've been able to provide to the people that have been a part of our Bosco football community is, I mean, it's just pretty remarkable when you think about it. You know, it's funny. We talk about rivalry, mm -hmm. modern day St. John Bosco. You know, I'm just sitting up here. I'm thinking, you know, if modern day isn't as good as they are, maybe you don't get crowned national champions on some of those here. Not to take any of the wing from you, but right. they're so good by knocking them off or you're so good if they knock you off. That gives you that national prominence. Right. And that's why that rivalry is so good. I mean, would you agree with that to a certain extent? A hundred percent. And, and you know, and this is this goes back to probably... Oh, man, probably around 2016, 2017, you know, we had a stretch there where we beat Modern Day six straight times. You know, we beat them twice in 13, 14, 15, 16, you know, so we, we had a pretty good run going against Modern Day at the time. And then I remember Bruce reached out to me. <laughs> so Bruce and I had a long talk. You know, I'm a firm believer that I didn't invent anything. It sure. wasn't like Jason Negro came up with something and was so <laughs> phenomenal that that's the reason why we're at. I just basically stole and I learned from a lot of other people and I kind of implemented them into our program where I knew they would work. Cause not everybody can do what we're doing at Bosco. That's the first thing, you know, the disclaimer that you need to know. We're a pretty unique situation. You need to be a part of the Trinity League and you need to have what I called at the time a running mate. And I told Bruce, I said, Bruce, we can dominate this thing. If you just get your guys and your program to believe that we can play at a national level. And that's when we started to go out and play some of the national teams across the country. I think we've played 26 national opponents, and I think we're something like 23 and 3 against those opponents. And I know Modern Day has done the same thing. We've played St. Francis. We've played the IMGs. We've played Miami Central, St. Thomas Aquinas's, all these schools across the country. And we've built a brand between our two programs where we're now able to go out, schedule anybody in the country, and you beat them. Well, then you're going to be ranked somewhere near the top, yeah, yeah, you know, and yeah. I think that's one of the things that I had early on in a vision is I needed somebody to go run with us and he was willing to do it. And obviously his program spiked in their success over that time and they started to now flip flop and it was probably a little detrimental to me and my success. <laughs> but again, I, I want to thank obviously him for believing in the fact that, hey, listen, we could go do this and we could go be pretty create something pretty special and that's what we were able to do and that's why we're at where we're at today is because of the league the opponents and having a running mate like modern day i love that running mate and that, that kind of leads me to this kind of hypothetical question i've always thought to myself you guys really are we won't quite talk about the landscape of high school football in the southern section quite yet but it's very obvious modern day bosco really a, a step above everyone else if you look at the history that's that's just a fact i've always thought to myself why not a national league why not get some, your games are on ESPN. Why not get a little advertising advertising money in there and get, you know, five powerhouse schools across the country. You got the advertising, the logistics will take care of themselves because the money, I mean, if I said, hey coach, nas a national league, you're gonna play IMG every right. year. So, and then at the end of that, you're for sure a national champion. You right. don't just get, you know, the, the AP used to just name a national champion in college football. And that's what happens in high school. When I think give you an idea like that how does that sound to you well I mean I, I think in theory it sounds like that's kind of where we're at now but in reality 
that that's not something that I want to be a part of. And, and a lot of people are going to, you know, probably scoff at this answer that I'm going to give, but we're an educationally based athletic school. It's not just about football at St. John Bosco. I have to think about my lower level programs because we're not a big, you know, all of a sudden import a bunch of dudes and then just go win with, with guys. We're trying to build it from the bottom and have kids matriculate through our program to be successful. And I want to provide experiences. And what has happened now is we are having to play opponents from all over the country and what it has done is it eliminated any local rivalries or any local teams that are willing to play us and it's causing a lot of strain on me and trying to find freshman games or find you know jv games and to try to build our program you know that way from a foundational standpoint so um, I, I don't think i want to be a part of that i like being a part of cif i think what they do you need a good strong governing body body and what rob wygod and tom simmons and the you know there's a new commissioner in place now the, what they have done is they've put us in position to allow us to go and build our brand and to play these other schools across the country and i think that's the most that we can ask for them and they've I've been real flexible with that. But otherwise, I want to be a part of CIF. I think that is what educational-based athletics really is all about. And I'm not looking to be a part of some super league or anything like that that's not realistic. If you want to be a national champion, you have the ability to go out there and do it. And right now, you know, we're putting ourselves in position by doing that by going out and playing some pretty elite opponents. So you, you, in, 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 in any case, you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna put together basically a national non-league schedule Correct. that puts us in that conversation. We tear, tear, take care of business in the Trinity League and we're right there anyway. Right, because we play some of the best football in the country For in sure. California, you know? And again, you have Modern Day who's currently ranked number one in the country. So you got them right there once, if not potentially twice on the schedule. You have the ability as a coach to go out and schedule whoever you want in you know weeks one through five and that's basically what we've been able to do luckily we have a lot of uh, parity in the trinity league in terms of like really good quality football teams max preps year in and year out ranks our league as the number one ranked conference or the number one ranked league in the country based on their metrics at which they use to do that and i think that all of the pieces are in place for us to go out there and to put, try to get that coveted mythical national championship but like i said a couple minutes ago it's you have to realize there are only certain schools in the in the state or in the country that will allow you to be able to do this it's not realistic when i was back at tribuco hills you know no i love that school i love that program and those guys do really good things but we were never going to be able to accomplish this because we weren't part of the trinity league we weren't being able to go out there and have the flexibility to play these national opponents so in order for us to accomplish this, being at Bosco is, is pretty unique. That allows me to do it. Would you, my last transfer question for mm -hmm. you, just looking at the rules, you've been around a lot, Coach. There's SOP, valid of, of residence change. W would you tweak any rules? Maybe uh, we've had coaches suggest that. Maybe, maybe a one, one free pass, per se. Uh, and then after that, th there's some consequences. That's just an example. Have you thought about maybe what could maybe, I don't know about the word help, but maybe alter that rule a little bit? Well, you know, I, here, here's what I think. I think, you know, the years have changed, you know, from from when I first started to where I'm at now. And there used to be a rule that a kid could get a free transfer prior to his first day of his sophomore year. So let's say a freshman chose a school and he just happened to choose St. John Bosco. And it's like, man, I'm just not I just don't ever see myself playing here. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to go to another school that gives me a better chance to play. Well, without the parents having to move, you know, this kid could go start and be immediately eligible. I remember that rule. You know, and I yes. thought that was a really good rule. And then the next thing is, if you really want to fix it, make the kid play sub varsity anytime, no matter what, whether it's a valid change of residence, whether it is a, um, you know, whether it's um, SOP, uh, so, no, eliminate all of it. Got it. Just simply say, okay, if you're going to transfer, you're going to sit one year, you can play football, you're going to play JV, you're going to play sophomore, you're going to play whatever. But if you're going to tra transfer past your sophomore year, you're going to sit one year regardless. I don't care if you moved from one part of the state to the other part. If that was in place, I think you would see a shift in a bigger dynamic and maybe some more parity 
happening, um, you know, with it. And I know we're trying to create that sure, with sure. this new playoff divisions, which I am not a big fan of. Oh, we can talk about that. You next. know, um, <laughs> you know, I just, I, I just, I'm not a big fan of this new playoff system. And NCI is well aware of it. I'm part of the advisory committee, and they're well aware where my stance is on this. But I think you would see a lot more parity if you were to change that rule up a little bit. So a little, you want to, you want to tighten it up a little. I, I think it would be more beneficial, or at least it would curtail some of the negative conversations that are happening around kids that are transferring and things like that. Um, but again, as long as the rules are in place and people are using them, you know, um, in a, in a correct manner, I think it, it can be, you know, a positive thing as well. So I'm not totally against it. I think there needs to be a blend of both somehow. So let's, let's talk about that playoff system. I would think that one of your issues would be you guys, you guys get out a game or two at the playoff. Right. I feel like the playoffs come and it's like, right. here comes St. John Bosco. They got to sit for a week. Right. They got to sit for two weeks and it, it takes away a game from your kids. And I think at right. the end of the day, that's important. That's just my opinion. Right. Um, but please let us know what, what is, what is your uh, beef per se with the, uh, with the playoff system now at the, at your level? Well, the, the only fix that I would see is there needs to be a blend of the both. You know, you do need to have some matrix that is going to help with the rankings and allow, sure. you know, you to understand kind of where people are at. But then you also need to try to drive programs to want to become more competitive, not the other way around. And right now what is happening, and if you just go to the CIF site and look for Games Wanted, everybody puts in there, we are a Division X team and we're looking to play X, Y, or Z opponents. And it's like, why are you looking to just play X, Y, and Z? Why aren't you looking to play A, B, and C opponents? And people will say, well, it's not, you know, why, why would I want to schedule a game that I'm not going to win? Well, how do you know that? I mean, there was nobody in the country thought we were going to go to Hawaii and lose to Kahuku. No, that's but true. But guess what that happened? That is true. St. John Bosco, the big, bad, amazing team all over the country, went and didn't play well, and they got beat by another opponent. Kahuku's a very good football program. Sterling Carvalho, the head coach there, is a super competitive guy. A week before, they lost to modern day 55 to 8. So everyone's thinking, oh, Bosco's going to roll them up 60 to 8. Guess what? Bosco lost. You know, and that is the beauty of high school athletics. It's the beauty of um, being able to go out there and play these competitive opponents and to not be afraid, right? Don't be afraid to be great. Sometimes we're afraid to go test our ability to be great. Kahuku was not afraid, and they went out there on their home, and you should have seen their community when they won that game. We almost couldn't get off the campus. They were so rowdy, <laughs> yeah. um, blocking our buses and hooping and hollering. But you know what? I sat back, and I, I could have been all upset and you know angered by it, but I was motivated by it. I was like, man, this is the beauty of this. We're in the North Shore of Hawaii, and this community is going nuts, and we pro helped provide them a memory for a lifetime. Um, and I've been on the other side of it. Sure. You know? So I was like, hey, it is what it is. It's our job and our responsibility for us to take the lessons Kahuku taught us that we're not as good as we think we are, and we need to go back to work. And maybe that's why we won 42-7 last week sure, yeah. against another team that was really good. Maybe so. it'll do you a favor. I know coaches don't generally like to see that kind mm -hmm. of motivation, but I, I always thought to myself, man, credit to Kahuku for choosing right. to play modern day in St. John Bosco in back-to-back -back weeks. I know that happens in the Trinity League, but that's just mm -hmm. the way the schedule uh, pans out sometimes. Just a couple more, Coach. Thanks for your time. Mm -hmm. Why why did you get into coaching? I know we talked a little bit about how how you got in, but now you're in it and and what is what is so rewarding of it for you? I just I really enjoy kids. I mean, at the end of the day, um, I think it keeps me young. I get to wear a t-shirt, a visor and shorts to work to every single day. Uh, I get to coach football. Um, the most rewarding thing to me is I'm ultimately an educator and I found out back at at 20 years old when I started my coaching career at Bellflower Youth Football at Bellflower High School and Junior All-American, when I was working with those seven and eight year olds and the impact that I had on their lives um, was, was great. And I still stay in contact with some of those kids that I coached way back then. And now they have their own families and they have their own kids and, you know, and they've been successful in life. And I feel that I had played a small part in that. And a lot of people ask me, why don't you go to college? You've had all this success at high school. You've reached the pinnacle multiple times. You know, how much, you know, winning is winning enough and this and that. And I, for me, it's not just about winning football games. It's about winning in the pursuit of trying to help kids reach their goals and their destination. And I think that's one of the reasons why I love what I do. Bosco provides me a lot of freedom um, to do that. 
you know, and to use the platform that I have to make a difference in kids' lives. And we happen to be in an area where we service a lot of inner city kids, uh, service a lot of underprivileged kids. And the Salesian mission of St. John Bosco, who are the owners and operators of our school, that is the kind of the cornerstone behind the education at which we provide is to do for, you know, unselfishly for others, especially at the youth, give them a chance. Use the preventative system of education in order to help these kids migrate into college and to have a better chance at, at being successful in life. And I am in the perfect place to do that. College can't provide that to me. No other high school could provide that to me. St. John Bosco does, and I'm going to be here as long as they're going to have me. My last one for you, and, and, and kind of just soften it up, why you got into sports, but I, I, you play at such a high level. These guys get so jacked up. You said you had 33 seniors and 20 of them are playing. I mean, that is such a high clip, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. But, I mean, do you ever tell these guys, like, hey, man, make sure you're having fun? I, you know, and, and I know yeah. that some people don't like that word at a high right. level, and that's the truth. I, I, you hear pros talking about having fun. Right. So I guess just my last question is, how does fun fit in, and, and, and is it a priority at St. John Bosco? I think so. I mean, I think winning's fun. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, is. that's the first thing. Uh, you know, we got to play in Florida at St. Thomas Aquinas and and to travel to Florida we spent you know four nights there we did some really cool things you know it wasn't just the football game you know even though we lost the game at Kahuku the memories at which we created and the things that we did and visiting Pearl Harbor and doing some of the different things uh, that we did you know in in Honolulu and on Hawaii um, provided you know these kids with a lot of fun you know last year we got to play at allen high school the 60 million dollar stadium and our kids walked in there and they were like man this is like quite an experience and then two weeks later we played uh central catholic from portland oregon in eugene at Autzen stadium i mean who's doing that you know we've played at the rose bowl in the cif championship game in their hundredth year anniversary of that stadium i mean that that is fun so there are a lot of fun elements about being a part of our program and the things that we're able to do, any high school can do it. I mean, you know, I talked to CIF guys, Rob Wygod's a good friend of mine, the former commissioner. And the one thing I told him is I wish we would develop some of these other programs, not necessarily at the division one level, to go experience some of the things that we've experienced. And I think more teams are doing it. I know Milliken went over to Hawaii. Some Hawaiian teams are coming here. Some teams are now starting to realize, hey, I don't need to be at St. John Bosco to be able to go play in Texas or in Florida or go play some of the great teams up in Utah. And the more that we do that, we're going to provide fun experiences for kids. And if you're ever at our stadium on a Friday night, it's a fun environment. You know, whether you're playing modern day or whether you're playing St. Francis Academy out of Maryland, it's a fun environment from the student section to the fan experience, to the cheerleaders, the band, our players, um, the opponents. You know, I, it's a fun time, you know, being a part of. Um, of St. John Bosco being a part of high school athletics in general is fun. And we're going to try to elevate that funness factor by doing all these really cool things. And I'm still looking for more things to do um, to kind of challenge our, our kids and challenge our parents to let's go accomplish that. Let's be a trailblazer or a pioneer and do something that nobody's ever done before. We went 3,000 miles in one direction to Florida and 3,000 miles, which might have hurt us, uh, <laughs> in another direction to Hawaii. But, man, I'd do it 100 out of 100 times. Because I love it. I love to see the smiles and the happiness on my kids' faces. Um, we swam in the Atlantic Ocean this year, and we swam in the Pacific in the middle of it in Hawaii. That's pretty unique. Not a lot of kids are able to do that. So when you talk about fun, that's fun. Sounds like a lot of fun. Coach Jason Negro from St. John Bosco, thank you for coming in and sitting down with us, the Southern Section sit-down. Man, maybe we can have you on again sometime, but for right now, thanks for coming in, and, and thanks for your time. I would love to do it, Tarek. Thank you for having me. Um, and I really appreciate everything CIF has done, not only for our school, our program, um, but I'm just happy that I have a job. It's it's <laughs> it's second to none, man, acro across this, this country. And I get up every day and I love what I do. So thank you for allowing me to come in here and talk about our program. Congratulations to you and best of luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Go Braves.